You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to The Raw Reaction here on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. It is producer Kilakev sitting in the number one chair this evening. Angry Tenzai and Big Dick are taking a vacation. No, they were not suspended. They were not fired after last week's show. Everything is good. They just needed to take some time off. So I'm feeling them in. And I don't know. I don't know how they would feel about Tonight's episode of Raw, the last episode of the year. Part of the reason they took off is because they felt like this Raw was going to be a bunch of bullshit. And to uh, some extent, it, it kind of was, I think. But most of the show, I thought, was actually somewhat decent. I mean, it wasn't the best, most awesomest uh, Raw of the year. Um, not even the, the most awesomest Raw to end a year. But it, for the most part, most of the show wasn't too bad either we will get into that here in just a few moments but you can't have a coast without a co-host you can't have a yin without a yang you can't have the popcorn without the butter and the salt ladies and gentlemen my co-host for this evening has been possibly the biggest superstar of the anger marks podcast network in 2014 this man has bailed us out so many times when we've needed a co-host at the last moment, and he is closing out the year doing it once again, the ubiquitous Jordan Garber. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Kevin, and good evening, everyone listening on AngryMarks.com. I don't really know what you ubiquitous means, but I do know that um, it is great to be back here again for another episode of The Raw Reaction. The more shows I'm on, the better, I, the better it is for me. So it's great to be on, and I'm ready to discuss Raw tonight. You don't know what ubiquitous means? I have no idea what ubiqu... But I don't even know how to say it, but... Oh, goodness. Like- I tell you what. You you send me the, the postcard that you have not sent me for Christmas yet, and I will send you a dictionary. Oh, well, that's nice. That's we- a nice offer. Maybe I'll look it up or I can go on Google or something. Anyways, guys... A little background, actually, of Jordan Garber is that he's uh, interviewed tons of big names before, and uh, he's on AngryMarks.com, and for sure, 2014 has been the year of Jordan Garber on AngryMarks.com, and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, oh, I just got a message from the chat room, ubiquitous means everywhere, so, yes, it's good to be everywhere, so, yeah, I'm ready to discuss Raw tonight, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good show. Yeah, you are you are like the man in black, Johnny Cash. You've been everywhere, man. You've been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Exactly. I've been on shows. I've done lots of shows for people. I've done interviews. And it's been a wild ride. I'm looking forward to what 2015 brings me. Yeah, absolutely. So this was the last Raw of 2014, and our our special hosts for the evening were were quite the throwback. Uh, you had the the glorious combination of Edge and Christian hosting for one night only, and I tell you what, um, I I really no disrespect to these two men. They are both uh, great uh, men in their own right, may possibly be legends. Certainly, for certain uh, Hall of Famers. Well, Edge is already a, a WWE Hall of Famer. I'm sure Christian is going to be there very shortly after he uh, decides to retire as well. Um, but just th- things just were, were not kind of clicking for the rated R superstar and um, um, wh- whatever fucking catchphrase Christian uses. I, I don't even know. Uh, if you don't know now, you know. That was one of his catchphrases in TNA. I remember that. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that, and that was possibly the last time, you know, Christian reek of awesomeness. Yeah, he used to be good, you know, and uh, that's the thing that happens when you get older is that you 
start to um you uh, start to not become as relevant as you were before and your career starts to wear down but for sure Christian will always be known as a all time great for sure. He's done so much for this business and it's funny because he actually started out here in uh, around Manitoba to do the shows for the Tony Candelo tour or so, and then he's made his way up to the WWE. So good for him. He's really had an amazing career. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, Dan Effenberg popping into the chat room. Right. What is up, Dan Berg? He Dan Berg makes a suggestion. Peep magnet. Maybe I. I. I don't. I, chick magnet. Not peep magnet, chick magnet. And then it led to, to his fans being called the peeps. Oh man. This, this, this is already making me think back way, way too much. You know, it, it's really interesting that they did bring back Edge, uh, for the last show of the year because, uh, uh, really, if, if you, if you remember last year's end of, uh, WWE Raw, um, they opened with the video package of Edge announcing his retirement and, uh, Christian coming out to, to celebrate him and, and suggesting they should, uh, or no, that's what they did tonight. My apologies. I, I actually didn't get to see the start of the show. I was reading Ian Clark's excellent recap and I guess they, uh, Edge and Christian said that they're going to send off 2014 with a bang Edge and Christian show. I don't know if they, uh, did it with 2014, 2013. What I, what I meant to say was, uh, Raw starts out with CM Punk sitting in, 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 in the ring and he, he's all fired up. He's in Richmond, Virginia and Raw this year was in DC. So at least they're hitting a right around the same market. Uh, and we had, uh, The Shield come out and it was, uh, CM Punk versus Seth Rollins there in that, uh, first hour there. So, uh, we, we start out 2014 with Edge and Christian getting back together um and then Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out and uh do their uh, little spiel which brings out John Cena and uh they kind of get into a little bit of verbal sparring here with Cena grabbing Heyman hoping to lure in Brock Lesnar which Lesnar takes the bait on that Cena tries to go for the AA but Lesnar gets away so uh you know we spend a good half hour filling that just like we do raw every Every week. Um, are you looking forward to uh, Lesnar and Cena heating it up for Royal Rumble? Um, indeed. Um, I really enjoy watching the Royal Rumble. And you know that um, the Royal Rumble is a very exciting pay-per-view because you have three, probably three or four uh, main card matches and then you have the Royal Rumble. So this match is most definitely going to be a classic. But as for winning the championship, I kind of think that Cena is going to win it at WrestleMania. Well, that that's still to be seen. Um, or, I mean, that's or like Lesnar loses at WrestleMania and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, it, I mean, it, we'll we'll see how that goes. There, there's a lot of people thinking that Cena is going to take the title at Rumble because they think, um, you know, Lesnar's time is up. And you know what? I'll, I'll I'll talk about that for just a second here. I I want to issue an apology to the Angry Marks Podcast Network and all of our great listeners. I've been a hypocrite. Um, I I was a, a an actual supporter of putting Brock Lesnar, the title on Brock Lesnar, and then Brock Lesnar, um, you know, not always being on Raw. And I felt that, and I, and I do believe that not having Lesnar on Raw, the champion on Raw every single week meant that a lot of other people got to shine. And I don't have any problem, you know, inherently with Brock Lesnar being the champion. I, I think he's a dominant individual, and I think you need to have a dominant individual as your champion. And, and Lesnar has certainly filled that role, no doubt. But with Lesnar not being a presence there every week, look at all the great guys we got to see step up into main events and, and step up their profile. I think the biggest one of all um, has been Dolph Ziggler. Um, he certainly ended out uh, his year on a bang, more popular than ever, and... As I've said before, I believe he cemented his place in, in the WWE universe. I think people really look at Dolph Ziggler now and they see what a value he has been all along. Dolph Ziggler has not been buried. He's not been underutilized. He's been utilized in just the right ways to make this program go along as it's needed to. I've not always agreed with it, but I think the end result has actually been pretty good for Dolph Ziggler. He's still with the company. He's obviously making uh, the money he wants to make, I think. Um, 
I think he could possibly go anywhere if he wanted to. Yet he chooses to stay right here, and I think I think he's been well rewarded for that. Um, look at the other uh, guys. Um, all three members of the Shield: Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. Uh, definitely breakout year for them as well together as the Shield, of course. And then individually, I think he, all of them have had uh, a really great time. And I, I, at this point, with the exception of Roman Reigns getting hurt, if Roman Reigns had not gotten hurt, I don't think I could predict who out of the three really had the best year. I think they all had an excellent year. Wouldn't you agree, Jordan? Uh, oh, yeah. Joe Ziggler has had an excellent year as well as many other stars on Raw, and it just comes to show that everyone was doubting Zoll Ziggler a long time ago, saying that he was underused and misused and all that, and uh, now you just look at that and it's completely changed for the better, and it's good to see that Dolph Ziggler is getting a little bit of a push. He's not performing the main event status, but he's getting his name out there, he's getting his name out there like he used to, and it's good for him, and hopefully it keeps up in 2015. Yeah, but th- this, is, this really isn't, this apology isn't about them, it's about Brock Lesnar. Um, but the re- the reason that they've been a- these other wrestlers have been able to get be as high profile as they have is because Brock Lesnar hasn't been there, and Brock Lesnar hasn't been there, and Brock Lesnar hasn't in there been there. Um, for two months, Brock Lesnar wasn't there. He was barely mentioned. There there was no presence of the WWE champion at all. And, and while I thought this was going to be awesome, I think it kind of really did hurt things. A little bit. And, and that's where my apology has to come in and, and calling myself a hypocrite because as many fans know, this, this was kind of the same program that WWE had planned for The Rock. And I was completely against this. Um, the, if you remember a couple years ago when, when The Rock came back and, and won the title from John Cena, um, I, I bitched and moaned, complained about The Rock because The Rock, uh, was there. And then he went away to Hollywood and he kept saying he'd come back and come back, but he never did come back and he was gone for far too long. And then all of a sudden one day he just magically shows up and he comes on the mic and he says, I'm back and I'll never ever leave. And then he disappeared and, and we didn't see him in, for six Maybe. months. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we're, we're, he's talking about go- going on to WrestleMania to take the title. He's not been here. I bitched and moaned about that. You can't have a part time champion. Because The Rock had too many things going for him, and Hollywood, and TV, and everything else, and I just thought it was a bad idea. And, and I think that that kind of proved itself out true. So, so here I am, you know, what, two years later, saying, oh yeah, Brock Lesnar off of TV, that's gonna be good. No, I was wrong, ladies and gentlemen. I will fully admit that I was wrong. Um, I, I don't think, I mean, it was good for a lot of wrestlers. But for the overall product for Brock Lesnar to be gone and not even have any reason. Um, he wasn't off in Hollywood making films. I don't think he was off doing his uh, gopher hunting TV show. Um, he, d- it, you know, he just is not contractually obligated to be here. And there, there was no reason for WWE not to have him there. I, I don't know if, if basically with, with the way Brock's, uh, contract was laid out there was just nothing wwe could do and even if they tried to entice him brock was just like nah i don't want to be there i don't know the backstage details i haven't read the dirt sheets on it but in the end i I don't think that this really helped wwe it helped a lot of individuals in wwe which i think is you know good but the overall wwe product maybe not necessarily better for not having your world champion there for two months but be that as it may, we're going into the Rumble. Brock Lesnar is back now, and I think fans are happier for it. And I'll be honest, I'm a little happier for it too. It, you know, it definitely gives gives me something to look for. That I'm glad all these guys did get the shine that they did, but we need to give the heavyweight title some shine. We we need to put that back into focus a little bit. Oh yeah, I completely agree. So you know that that that's kind of how we started out the the show. And, uh, guest in the chat room says, good on you to apologize, Kev, even though you didn't have to. I know I didn't have to, but, but it, it just feels He's good. A point. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, before we go any further, I should mention our chat room. Chat room is here every time we do a live show on angrymarks.com. It's www.angrymarks.com forward slash chat. It's the best way to interact with the show. Um, in our chat room tonight, tonight we got the aforementioned Dan Effenberg, my former co-host here 
on this show. In fact, we've got our Raw recapper, Ian Clark. Jordan Garber, of course, hanging out there, guest 450. I think that's actually the boss, Stevie J, just not signed into his account. Um, I may be wrong on that one. And DeGrappla. Uh, welcome to the chat room, DeGrappla. And if anybody else wants to flow in tonight or at any time, come right on in. We'll be more than happy to talk with you. Um, we'll get more and into... Of course, and exactly, and you hit the nail right on the head there. Everyone get involved in the chat room, ask questions, I'll answer any question. And of course, uh, you can also ask me questions on my Twitter at Jordan J. Garber, so follow me on there too. And, uh, yeah, um, it's always good to show, have some support and have some guys in the chat and, uh, keep it, uh, keep involved with the show. Absolutely. Ian Clark chimes in. The only thing I would have tweaked is that I would have given Brock someone different for the Rumble and had him leave absolutely destroying Cena. It was surprisingly nice not to have him there for a few months, but they should have sent him off making it look like he wasn't there because what was the point even making him defend it? Good point there, Ian. Very good point. Uh, Ian Clark, of course, our WWE Raw recapper. He dedicatingly has done this work for a couple of years ever since I stopped doing the Raw recap myself. He is a good man for that Charlie Brown. Um, we definitely owe him a, uh, a bronze medal from the, the president of the Angry Marks Podcast Network. That way he, he can wear it on every podcast and, and every recap that he does. And, and we all be reminded just how important Ian Clark is to this whole operation. Um, without him, some weeks, this whole thing just completely falls apart. Um, falling apart, uh, going on, just hitting some quick highlights in the show. Um, our first match on the show was Dolph Ziggler versus, uh, Rusev, um, the Intercontinental Champion versus the United States Champion in a non-title match. Um, this ends with Dolph Ziggler winning by disqualification because Rusev, uh, puts Ziggler in the corner and stomps a mud hole in him and refuses to break it off. Um, Rusev goes for the accolade afterwards. Um, referees are trying to pull Rusev off. Ryback runs down and chases him off, helps Ziggler up. We go to commercial break. We come back to a PowerPoint presentation from Ryback, a PowerPoint presentation about his whole life in the WWE going back to 2004. And I, I completely forgotten this, uh, 2004 on SmackDown. We had the silverback Ryan Reeves, um, competing for something. And I, I can't even remember, but Ryback, uh, for, for, um, oh, oh yeah, it was million dollars tough enough. Uh, as I remember now, um, he didn't make it, but he was so despondent. Um, he goes back to Louisville and starts working in a barbecue joint. Now, I think that's where he started getting his appetite, to be honest. Um, which leads me, leads us now into the whole feed me more thing now because I don't think that man ever stops eating. I, I think if, if the pictures I've seen are, are correct, he actually walks around backstage with a feed bag strapped to his face when he's not wrestling. Does he really? No, but now I got you imagine, imagining Ryback looking like a horse. Yeah, that would be pretty uh, crazy to see all that, eh? Uh, uh, that's, that, that's the visual image that I'm leaving you with for the rest of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Um, oh, that's probably good at all. <laughs> but Ryback goes through this whole thing about his WWE career and leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back and getting hurt and coming back and getting hurt and coming back and, and finally where he's at now. And, and, and this is like 15 minutes with 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 pictures and with video and with a music montage uh, of of the Feed Me More chants even. All this to lead up, he wants to challenge Rusev at the Rumble, not in a USA versus Russia, but just two big guys beating each other's ass. It's always good to see that uh, he got that started. And um, it was kind of weird, the whole PowerPoint presentation. I think he kind of hoped for it to skip it a little bit, but... Uh, he, he got his point across. I thought it was an okay promo. What did you think? I want to know how long Ryback did his homework on this to, to get this thing polished up and shined up and how long it's been sitting it back there just waiting to play it. I mean, <laughs> no wrestler comes out with, with, I mean, I, I don't understand. I mean, was he trying to come, it's like he was trying to come out to, you know, deliver a presentation to the WWE board of directors. Here is why I should get to challenge Rusev by 
Silverback, Ryan, Sheffield, Reeves, feed me somebody. Junior. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, I, 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 you got to, he could have gotten to the point a lot faster, I think. Um, Ian Clark says it was unexpected. It was unpolished, perhaps, but definitely established that Ryback is someone that they're serious about again. And I guess you have to be if you come out with a prepared PowerPoint presentation for 15 minutes. Crowd didn't give a shit, though, to be honest. Oh, exactly. And um, you can notice that. You can totally notice that the crowd didn't care. And that's the thing, is that they want to see wrestling. They want to see the action, man. And uh, just seeing that PowerPoint presentation, and it was really funny to see, but it's like, that's, there's a one that you got to cross. He, he went too long on it. Someone should have been erupted or something or whatever. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, here's something that was disappointing. After that, we come back from commercial break. Uh, Nikki Vella, Nikki Nikki Vella, 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 Excuse me, Nikki Bella versus Natalia in a non-title match. Um, the these two women should have been tearing it up in the ring. Instead, we got possibly the shortest divas match of the year. Um, Nikki immediately taking down. Th- this is quote from quote. Um, from Ian Clark's recap, and the whole match probably takes about took about as long as I'm saying it. Nikki with a double leg, Natty with mounted punches, knocks Nikki out of the ring. Tyson catches her, Natty with a baseball slide into Nikki after she jumps out of Tyson's arms. Natty chastises Tyson for catching her and and holding her and cradling her and 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 then making goo goo eyes at each other or something. I I don't know. And then Nikki with a clothesline to the back and a rack attack for one, two, three. Seriously, that's it. That's all the Divas can fucking get on the least useful show of the year. The last show of the year, right before New Year's, Raw's ratings are already low. Nobody really cares. You've got the Texas Bowl on TV where Arkansas was kicking the shit out of uh, a Texan team. Was it Texas? Texas State? uh, Texas A&M? I don't know. One of them. Um, Frank Vaughn, former co-host, was all excited about it. He wasn't watching Raw tonight. He had it on DVR. But, but, you know, with people not paying attention to Raw as of late, come on. You could have at least given two of the best divas five minutes, and they couldn't even get that. Yeah, exactly. Um, they, they couldn't even get that, and that's the thing. It's repetitive, and it gets really frustrating at times. Um, yeah, just... I, I, I'm I'm so over how this is working for the divas, and I feel sorry for them because they're they're really busting. They they really tried to bust their ass a lot really this year. Trying. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and they're they're doing obviously great things in NXT with these ladies, but they're 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 still not getting their due. They're still not getting their respect on Raw. I don't understand. Um, match three, WWE Tag Team Championship, The Miz and The Miz Dow versus The Usos. Um, we had a backstage segment that kind of set this all up. Um, Naomi walks in and gives Miz a hug. Um, she thanks Miz for everything she's done. She thanks him for giving the Usos a title match. Um, she's just like beamingly happy and thanking him for everything. And, and I, I think Miz is kind of like half confused and half bemused by it all. But, but, but he thinks things are absolutely going his way. No such luck. Um, the Usos, they came in with, with their foot on the gas here. They they didn't let go, and and neither did the Miz. His ego absolutely hung on. He refuses to tag in Damian Sandow here, time and time and time again. And because of it, uh, Miz thought he had everything uh, wrapped up here, but then things start falling apart. And even sacrificing uh, Damian Sandow into a super kick from the Usos didn't work. Um, he tries for uh, a uh, Skull crushing finale, um, still doesn't get the pin. Jimmy finishes him off with a super kick. They both finish him off with a, with a tag team super kick. Superfly splash from Jimmy Uso. We have new tag team champions to end the year. Well, that is always really cool to see, and, uh, it's good to see that, uh, sorry, it's good to see that the Usos are the tag team champions again. And, uh, my question to you, Kevin, is how long are we going to see the Usos having those tag team titles in this reign? I predict not very long. Um, I, I, I kind of wish maybe they'd went a little bit longer with, uh, Sandow and Miz, but, um, we, they, there, there's a new team arriving here 
in WWE and on Raw and they made their debut towards the end of the night. Um, after uh, weeks of promos, um, oddly enough, um, apparently Miz and Miz Dow were not done for the night at the last match of the night. Um, which is, this is unusual. We, Miz and Miz Dow took on the debuting Ascension. And I want to make a comment here about that. And uh, Victor was trained by a former uh, host that I've worked with before, Bruce Hart. And Bruce Hart trained Victor. And it was really cool to see Victor debut by someone who was trained by a, a former guy I worked with as a host for Harpy Radio. So that was really cool to see Victor debut on Raw. And uh, I wish them all the best, and I wish the Ascension all the best. I'm really, I'm really excited to see what this tag team has in store. Yes, if you have watched the Ascension on WWE NXT, they were just absolute dominant beasts, and that this was, uh, this was just a pure ass kicking here. If you thought the first match was an ass kicking, um, it was Miz Dow's turn. Uh, Miz and uh, Connor start off, but Miz Dow quickly gets tagged in. And he just gets the shit beat out of him by uh, Victor and Connor. Um, the Ascension finish him off, thankfully. Very short match with the Fall of Man. And, and that's the debut of the Ascension. Um, I'm sure there are going to be... Uh, this whole match will probably be made available on WWE.com and on YouTube. Um, if not, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to see it on WWE Network. So check it out. New debuting tag team. The Ascension, I think Raw fans are going to like them. If, as long as they stick with, if you got the same characters that you got in NXT, I think you'll definitely like them. Well, you know, and there's one thing, too. I got a, a fan comment from Craig who says that he loved listening to Bruce Hart when I worked with Heartbeat Radio. So that's really cool to see, uh, cool to hear as well, too. And do you think the Ascension has a tag team title run in their uh, future? Um, I I think that's a strong possibility. Um, right now I I think the tag team ranks are um we we've got you know we've seen what the Usos have done. They've been very dominant this year. Um, Golden Stardust they had a great run this year as well. Um, you had this brief run with uh Mizdow and Sandow, but now that the titles are off them, I don't think that uh we're going to see much. Of, more out of them. I think, I think it's probably about time to break that team up. Either that or it's going to be, uh, Miz going back to singles matches with Sandow still backing in his corner. I'm still fine with that. I don't think the charm of, of the, uh, the, the stunt double has quite worn off yet. But, uh, other, other tag teams happening in WWE right now, there's really not a whole lot, but I think there's enough teams for the Ascension to run through and, uh, to start making his run, you know, and a lot of people have been saying, uh, kind of criticizing the Ascension because of the promos they've had on Raw kind of remind you a lot of uh, of Demolition or um, the Legion of Doom, and that's you know, and it kind of does, but that's okay because there's not been a lot of tag teams in professional wrestling that have tried to duplicate them, and I don't think the Ascension is trying to duplicate them either of those teams, but I think it's okay. If, if they borrow on those things, because, you know, you're talking Legion of Doom and Ascension, you know, really their heyday was 20, 30 years ago. I think it's okay Very to borrow. I, I think it's okay to, uh, to borrow from some of those elements. That's, that's absolutely fine. I mean, you know, and a lot of wrestlers have done that over the years. I mean, you don't, for example, you, you don't get Hulk Hogan until you have, uh, Jesse the Body Ventura. You don't get Jesse the Body Ventura in, until you've had a uh, a couple of other legends that have come through over the time. Um, for example, you know, I, I don't think you get The Rock unless you actually had uh, Rocky Johnson. Um, oddly enough, uh, you know, maybe that one's a little too easy, but um, I don't think you get like adorable Adrian Adonis until you had adorable Adrian Street. Um, you know, there, there's nothing bad about borrowing from somebody's wrestling character. And a lot of wrestlers, of course, will admit that they borrowed a lot of their elements from one of the most flamboyant wrestlers of all time, um, gorgeous George War. Um, sorry, I started to strangle on my words there. I didn't mean to do so. Gorgeous George, the original Gorgeous George, not, not the blonde, big boobied bimbo from WCW, who, of course, borrowed her name from... The old school guy. Yeah, the original Gorgeous George. 
very much. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, I, I think it's absolutely okay for the Ascension to go ahead and, and borrow from that. They're, they're gonna cast their own, no doubt. But Usos. Oh yeah, I totally agree. Uso- I totally agree, and I like what the Ascension's doing, and they're borrowing their gimmicks r- respectfully, and that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just really excited to see how the Ascension fares out, because it's, this could be the best, new best, I can predict that this team might be one of the top best coming up teams of all time of this era. That's my, that's my, uh, prediction. I think they're gonna be really good. I think there's a lot of good things happening for them. Well, let's not cast dispersions on them just yet. You're right, they just started. Yeah, so let, let, let's give them some time to, act, to, you know, to do their own thing. Speaking of throwbacks, uh, we come back from a commercial break. We've got Cesaro. Sitting in a corner of the ring with a towel thrown off his over his head, kind of sulking, mic in his hand. He says, let me just get a few things off my chest. And, and he, he's like, 2014 should have been my year. I won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, now, all of a sudden, WWE decision makers are telling me that I don't connect. That's right. I don't connect. What about me? What about Raven? What? Um, sorry. Sorry. Wrong wrestler there. Um, I got nothing from Jordan. I, uh, I guess so. Like, uh, you were talking about what about me and, um, I lost you there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I forget some days just how old of an individual I am and just how young of an individual Mr. Jordan Garber is. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, when, when Raven, let's see, line. let's see, um, you're 19 now, right? I'm 19, turning 20 next year in September, the big 2-0. So you're 19 this year, 2014. Ten years ago would have been 2004, you were 9. Um, okay, when Raven was whining about what about me, you were probably, okay. you were probably just starting potty training. <laughs> But like I said, like I, you can always watch old wrestling tapes and see that. And uh, I don't know if Raven said that. Did he say that? What about me? Yes. And what? That, I love that gimmick. I mean, I remember watching it on YouTube. I remember his match with Rhino at Backlash 2001. That was awesome. Man, and, and here, here's the, here. Wow. Yeah, you remember watching it on YouTube when I saw it? There was no fucking YouTube. <laughs> We had to pay for, you had to pay for cable TV to watch that shit live on TNT. I remember that, TNT. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, you, you had to pay and watch it on cable. This was right after Raven had left WWF, not even WWE, WWF with the Johnny Polo gimmick and he comes to WCW just an absolute sulking mess. Just whining and crying in the corner of the ring every week. What about me? What about Raven? What about Raven? And, you know, I mean, man, that that's some old memories there. But Cesaro, Cesaro's been watching his wrestling tapes. Or at the very least, he's got a WWE Network subscription, and he's been paying attention to the Monday Night Wars. And he came across this. So we tapped into his inner flock here, ladies and gentlemen. And he starts whining and crying about uh, how he's not getting any respect from WWE um, and how he doesn't even care about the WWE universe. And then business starts to pick up a little bit. To borrow another old school phrase that uh, was around before Mr. Jordan Garber could uh, uh, put together a couple of sentences here. It's me, it's me, it's BNB. Speaking of an individual tapping into another one, shouts out to Diamond Dallas Page there. Wade Barrett, the bare knuckle brawler. Bad news Barrett is back, ladies and gentlemen. And he says, Cesaro, I've got some bad news. You might not care about connecting with these people, but I assure you there will be something connecting with you tonight. It'll be the bull hammer to your shiny little head. And that is what happened in this match. This was a good back and forth match. I absolutely loved it. But as predicted by Mr. Bad News Barrett, he delivered on the bad news. Bull hammer, three count. We're done. That was a really, uh, amazing match. And it's good to see Bad News Barrett back because, um, he, um, he always had that it factor and, uh, he's won lots of titles and it's good to see him back and, uh, Bullhammer back and uh, the whole thing back, and it's, uh, it's going to be exciting to see what Barrett has in store for his future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
this was a this was a good match. So I liked it. I highly suggest you go watch this one. Um, one that you don't have to watch so much, but um, if you're a fan of either Jack Swagger or Luke Harper, this is an okay match. Um, Luke Harper with the weird backstage promo saying that he's a product of society. Um, and something, something, something. I kind of zoned out there for a minute. Um, but Jack Swagger versus Luke Harper, a uh, fine match back and forth. Um, Harper really shows what, why he's just such a great wrestler though. I mean, there, there's a lot of depth in his character with the wrestling moves that he uses. And you don't see that a lot out of wrestlers who are able to tell a story with their move set that that really reflects what their character is. And that's what I really like about Luke Harper. We saw that in this match tonight. Um, Swagger tries to put the Patriot lock on Harper. Harper grabs a rope to escape. Swagger tries to go for a Swagger bomb, gets blocked. Um, Luke Harper finishes off with with a simple but powerful discus clothesline. Not a fancy very, move. Very powerful. Not a fancy move, um, but just... Just, just good, solid wrestling, and I like it. Yeah, of course, and uh, yeah, just seeing that was really cool. You know, the whole discus pose line, a traditional wrestling move, and to have that as a finisher is pretty cool. It kind of brings back the old days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of the old days, backstage, John Cena and Edge are kind of reminiscing about how they fucked each other over over the years. And then Christian just randomly pops in. Hey, remember that time Edge went over to your dad's house and slapped him around? Wow, that. Oh, are you referring to John Cena Sr.? Yes, um. <laughs> and I interviewed John Cena Sr. Remember that? So we went to John Cena Sr. Wrestling World 247 interview his house and he slapped him. But eventually, did you know that John Cena Sr. is not only an amazing guy, but he has had two matches in WWE and he got the last word in 2008 when he kicked Randy Orton's head and punted him in the head. And then, unfortunately, at the beginning of 2014, Randy Orton attacked John Cena Sr. yet again. That's the history. Randy Orton doesn't only have a, a, a beef with John Cena, he also has it with his father, which is cool. Edge does, sorry. Well, you know, you, if, you're go, if you're going to... Randy Orton and Edge, rated RKO. You, you, well, I mean, if you're, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take out somebody, you don't just take out somebody, you, you start with the head. And you, and you work oh, your way down. Obviously, John Senior Senior has, uh. Senior Senior. John Senior Senior! Next on Lucha Underground! And if you're not watching Lucha Underground, ladies and gentlemen, great, fantastic yeah, wrestling you program. Check, you're tune in. Underground. Yeah, tune in to the El Ray Network. If you don't have the El Ray Network, call your cable or satellite provider and find out more on the Mean Gene Hotline, just a dollar ninety nine a minute. And you can even call the Jordan Garber Hotline, ladies. I'm available. I'm just kidding around. I'm just kidding around. But no, uh, you guys can um, just uh, call the hotline, just like the old days. I wonder if it still works. I wonder what it would the call would be directed to. I don't know. I I've never I've never thought to follow up on that. I'm, I'm sure somebody has. We'll, we'll find out someday. Anyway, um, Christian uh, goes exit stage left, stage right even. Zena and Edge kind of stare each other down and Zena's like, yeah, I do remember that. But more importantly, I remember that we were two guys that uh, the, the, guy, the other guys said would never make it in the business. But once we got our shot, we made it. And I respect you. And Edge is like, I respect you. And... They they, they uh, awkwardly stare at each other and then they they just start making out. Oh, oh I got a question from a Hawk of Aniac on the Angry Mark <laughs> chat. What is that hotline number, Garber? I don't know what the hotline number is, but um, you guys don't have to worry about it. Uh, the Jordan Garber hotline. Uh, there's no such thing. So, uh, but do you know? And I got a, quite an entertaining comment from Ian Clark. Can you subscribe to the hotline for nine ninety nine? That's a creative comment there. No, you cannot. So, uh, but that is cool. And I want to give you guys a lecture about the uh, WWE Network. Nine ninety nine is a great deal. It, but you can save money as well by going to the store and getting your Mountain Dew and chips. And that also costs nine ninety nine. That's all it costs. Uh, Mountain Dew and chips a month, pretty much. So uh, get the WWE Network and uh, enjoy it. There you go. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the nine, the the WWE Hotline or or the Mean Gene Hotline uh, probably went out of business. About the same time you were potty training. <laughs> Good grief. You, you need Boy to be. God. Oh man. 
I'm having too much fun teasing you over your age. You, you, you are quite literally a, a young buck. Or, or as, as they would, or as they would say in the wrestling business, you're still greener than goose shit. Oh, I'm totally greener than goose shit. I think everyone has <laughs> realized that. The things I've been posting before and the mistakes I'm making, the things I'm learning from as well. But I'm, I've been doing this for three years and, uh, like, it's really cool to see that's, uh, what's going on with what I've accomplished so far and all these names I've interviewed. And, like you say, every day you continue to learn, and the more you learn, the better you get. So uh, it's a good thing to start early, for sure. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the heat magnet himself, the man who takes no time to put in an opportunity to plug himself or put himself over at anybody or anything's expense, the great Jordan Garber. I love you, man. I will plug anybody, yes. I, I do like to plug I like to put myself over, but... um. I put all of you guys over the fans, because without the fans, there is no show. And, of course, uh, follow Angry Marks on Twitter as well, at uh, Angry Marks, for sure. Every 20 minutes, they have an interesting news story, breaking news story, fresh from the sources, ready for you to read. So that's what makes Angry Marks one of the top sites. And, uh, yeah, read that, and uh, it's awesome. You got your fix. Well, I won't plug anything, but I will. there are a couple of divas on the roster that I would plug, given an opportunity. Nothing. Come ah, oh, come on, man. You know, Ten, Tenzai and Vic would have been all over that, man. I give you an op- an open opportunity there. Swing and a miss. What are you talking? Swing. Oh, the diva thing. Swing, swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. We're we're. Diva thing. Fuck it. Like fuck I said, it. I love the diva. Let let me pull out a classic Kilikev catchphrase. Fuck it. Fail. Moving on. Match six on this show. Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. This was oh. uh around the the ten o'clock hour. This was the big, the big match of the night you definitely wanted to see, and this took up a good 20 something minutes. Um, but of course, uh, we got Big Show out there on commentary running his mouth, blah, 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 Rollins wins by disqualification, um, and then Big Show tosses Rollins across the announcer table, flips the table over on him, and uh, backstage, Seth Rollins, Big Show said that they've got a New Year's toast for John Cena later on tonight. For sure, and uh, it was a good match. What did you think about it? It was a good match. Uh, definitely match of the night. Awesome stuff. I thought so, too. I agreed. Yeah. So, um, back, um, backstage... Bray Wyatt promo. Um, it gets announced that Dean Ambrose versus Wait Bray Wyatt next week in an ambulance match. Boy, they they are just pulling out all the stops here, are they not? Let's think of it. Think of it this way: an ambulance match, a very rare match that you guys see on WWE today, the rarest match in WWE history, will be on Raw next week. How big of an announcement is that? Yeah, but where where is this going to stop at this point? You know, you've already yeah. had you, you've already had the, the TLC match. You've had the uh, the street fight match. You're going to have an ambulance match. If one of these two don't kill each other next week, where does this stop? Um, Singapore cane match. Um, are are we going to? Um, Punjabi prison match. Um, I remember that. Um, are they both East? They're not both Indians. The East Indians, though, so you can't really do that. You know, are 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 we going to do uh, an, an an inferno match, a, a bullwhip match, uh, um, um, lum, lumberjack match, lumberjill match, um, a pudding match? Just kidding. They, they might as fucking well. They, I'm. They these two could probably fight every damn stipulation match you could ever think of that's ever been used. Just short of the, uh, the, the steel cage inside the steel cage with the electric chair in the middle with Abdullah the Butcher getting electrocuted. Oh, the Abdullah the Butcher, that, that asshole <laughs> pretty much almost caused some innocent people their lives. And I've heard that idiot has charged you guys to interview him. It well, could be the other way around because the Abdullah the Butcher is being a little prick. Well, I, I don't care about Abdullah the Butcher anymore. My point was, um, they could probably go through every kind of match um, they could possibly ever create, and I'm not sure if we'd ever get tired of it, to be honest, because 
these guys just beat the shit out of each other. And it's like they're just, they're, they're never done. I don't know if they'll ever will be done. But at some point, they're going to have to put an end to this. They're going to have to put them at least in different feuds. Um, just so we, you don't wear out the fans on this. Cause, you know, these two might not wear out beating the shit out of each other every week for our enjoyment. But there's only so many matches we can take between these two guys before we just kind of stop caring. So I hope after this next week, that's it. I don't, I don't even want to see these two at the Rumble. I don't even know if I want to see them in the Rumble against each other. Um, I, I think it's about time we get a break from them. Oh yeah, I completely agree. And then, oddly enough, I, I wish they had ended the show with this because I think that's what most, it's what most fans were tuning in for, for the night. Uh, Daniel Bryan, um, word leaked out that Daniel Bryan was going to be able to return to action. But Daniel Bryan sent out a tweet earlier in the day saying he had a huge announcement to make on Raw tonight and that he was at a crossroads in his career, which had a lot of fans speculating that he was actually going to announce his retirement while he still had his health. That is not the case. Um, I The prediction that I made was, was the one that would come true here. Daniel Bryan first to announce himself in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's really cool that Daniel Bryan's going to be in the Royal Rumble. And that's a great announce, announcement. It's just good to see the guy back after he's worked so hard to get back to where he used to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's been a long road for Daniel Bryan. Uh, at, at the end of 2013, he he was still fighting with the um, with the authority. He was still not getting the respect. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, on this show last year, um, he was in the main event against Luke Harper. Um, and Daniel Bryan, uh, won that one, uh, able to eventually chop Luke Harper down and, and uh, have him, uh, didn't submit to the yes lock, but, uh, took him out with the running knee to the head. And then Daniel Bryan took on Eric Rowan, um, and which, uh, Daniel Bryan got the pin with a roll up. And then he had to take on Bray Wyatt where, um, Harper and Rowan charged the ring and attacked Bryan. So Bryan wins that by disqualification. And, uh, this, this was in the middle of the, uh, segment where Bray Wyatt is trying to, uh, convert over Daniel Bryan to his side. And, uh, you know, ultimately it doesn't happen and Bray Wyatt just kind of moves on. You know, it, that's something. Um, uh, when you think about Bray Wyatt, how many people has he tried to entice over to whatever this thing he's peddling? And so many people have just basically resisted him. And in the end, it doesn't get over. And Bray Lights just like, I don't care. I'm moving on. Awesome. And, and that's just the way it should be, man. And uh, it, it was a good feud, as you uh, as you saw. I just got a message here. He said that I... Oh, okay. I'm not going to read that. That was uh, different. But like you said, Bray, Bray Wyatt is different. And uh, that's the thing that separates him from the roster that he's really, really different from everyone else. And that's what you have to do to make it big in this business is be your own character and be your own man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, bring this back around. Daniel Bryan, first person into the Royal Rumble. Um, congratulations to him. But it was not the last segment of the night. The last segment of the night, the first ever Cutting Edge Peep Show. and Amazing. And if the crowd could give any less fucks about anything on the show, it was this. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, Kevin, ser- you are not going to believe what just happened right now. Oh? One half of the wolves, Davey Richards, has just followed me on Instagram. Awesome! Congratulations to I, you. I have marked out officially. Um, Davey Richards is awesome. Thank you, Davey Richards, for doing the right thing and following Jordan Garber on Instagram. You are truly a great talent. Yeah. Now- yeah. Now, does that mean that Davey Richards is actually listening to this podcast? If so, Mr. Davey Richards, um, feel free to come into our chat room real quick and say hi. Uh, if you want to come on the air and plug anything, go right ahead. Uh, we'd love to talk to you if you're actually listening oh, yeah. live. That that would be great. It would not be the first time that a professional wrestler has been clandestinely following the Angry Marks Podcast Network for some time. The, you know, we sometimes get some people we've been interviewing. Um and it comes out that they've actually been listening to us for, for quite a while. So, um, awesome. yeah. you know, if we could get Mr. Richards on the air sometime, that would be quite awesome. Um, so, you know, 
I'm sure a lot, everybody in the Ingram Marks Podcast Network probably gave more fucks to that announcement just now than the Cutting Edge Peep Show. I mean, seriously, this thing was so dead. Edge quips, do you smell something? This show, um, and Christian's like, yeah, I do. It's the show. It totally reeks. And Edge goes, of awesomeness. And the crowd was dead. Goes wild. Goes wild? Did, did they? Yeah, they go, they went wild. They, did they pipe in crowd noise in, in the Canadian feed? Um, because in the American feed, the crowd was dead. They were sitting on their hands. I mean, it was crickets. Yeah. This, this crowd did not give a shit all night for most anything, and they most certainly did not give any shits at all. They were all out of shits to give at this point. There was nothing. Oh, yeah. And, like, you look at that, and there is no, no one cared. No one looked back and saw what happened, and, like, they just saw what happened. They just saw the whole thing, and they didn't really react to it. The crowd was wild. Didn't go wild. The crowd was full of crickets. And that's what I was talking about earlier, is that the crowd should went wild for them, because Edge and Christian really made a name for themselves throughout their career, and they're both going to be Hall of Famers, and we know that for sure. Yeah, but at the same time, if I'd been there live, I wouldn't have uh, gone wild for it either, because really, Edge and Christian just start pulling out all these lame, old lines, and... It, it it just wasn't exciting. It it really felt like they they were just reaching, trying to draw this crowd in, and they 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 just had nothing. Um, so may, maybe it was a good thing that they really didn't have much interaction in the show tonight because that this was just all uninspiring. But really, it wasn't about them. It was about their special guest, Seth Rollins. And Seth Rollins comes out, and J and J Security come out with them, and they've got champagne bottles, and uh, you know Rollins basically puts over himself and says, who's really had a better year than me? And I don't think that's that's an argument you can't make. I, I think I think he made a very good argument here. He lays out everything he's done. Um, he engineered the rise of the shield. He engineered the destruction of the shield. He got money in the bank. Um, Triple H's new best buddy, um, the star of the, the authority. Um, look at everything that he, he's gotten to do. Um, so, you know, I, I can't blame him for tooting his own horn here. Um, but he says he's going to throw a party and he's going to bring out the big show to party with them. And then he, to, to, to tap it all, top it all off, he wants to call out John Cena. But John Cena, of course, doesn't come out. But this is where, this is where things kind of get ugly for me. Um, you know, I was pretty much enjoying the show all night. I didn't enjoy this. Uh, when John Cena doesn't come out, Rollins says, basically, okay, you're forcing my hand. Um, he takes the briefcase, he, he wipes out Christian, um, Edge suddenly finds himself pretty much surrounded here, Big Show puts his hands on him, forces him down to the mat, um, his head on the briefcase, and Seth Rollins is threatening to do the mushroom, st- the, the stomp on the back of Edge's neck if John Cena doesn't come out, and... This this put a pit right into my stomach. Um, I, I I realize that this is just all acting and and Edge is not in any danger, but I think there's just some things that you don't joke about, and you don't you don't uh, turn into a storyline. Um, turning Jim Ross's Bell's palsy into a storyline multiple times was just wrong. Um bringing up uh, Jerry Lawler's heart attack that he suffered live on the air was just wrong, e- even if Lawler tac- tacitly approved it. And I know wrestlers do do such sick things all the time. It's just who they are. But it was still wrong. A- and to put Edge in this position where he legitimately had to retire because a doctor said, one wrong move and you're paralyzed for the rest of your life. And now we're going to threaten to to paralyze him for the rest of his life. I I just did not enjoy that at all. Oh yeah, I completely agree with you. I didn't enjoy it either, and it was just seemed like there was too much stuff going on at the same time. It threw way too much at you, and he couldn't really wasn't enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, it just I I I don't like I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. It it it's it's bad business if you ask me when you, when you start fooling around like that. Uh, but they get finally get John Cena out there, and, and Rollins messes with him a little bit, 
and then basically gets to his point. He's forcing John Cena's hand. If John Cena does not use his verbal authority to br- verbal word to bring back the authority, he's going to snap Edge's neck. And I think a lot of people were expecting that Randy Orton was going to be at the show tonight, and this would be the point where Randy Orton would come out and, and want to try to to snap Rollins in half um, because you know they don't get along. They they went out on bad terms. Randy Orton, of course, went out on on an injury angle at the hands of Seth Rollins. But no, that doesn't happen. John Cena gives his word. He brings back the authority. And then they threaten to snap Edge's neck anyway. Cena tries to make the save. He gets beat down. He takes a stomp to the back of the head himself. And then they go off and celebrate. And hey, here is Triple H and Stephanie McMahon right there. And I am back to being fucking pissed off. Um, I'm going to adjust my mic here for just a second so it's not buzzing. Sorry about that. But I am now fucking pissed off. Fucking a th- Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are back. God damn it. This is the fucking bullshit that made me hate WWE in 2013. M- fucked up oh bullshit. This goddamn shit that totally ruined Daniel Bryan's fucking career, totally killed one of the best angles ever going in WWE, totally grounded his career to a halt, completely wasted Daniel Bryan for six fucking months, and when he finally gets his title, he's already too fucking banged up and injured to be able to have a credible run, and has to fucking drop it at the hands of that fucking douchebag Triple H, and we get a whole fucking year of authority fucking bullshit thrown down our goddamn necks till we can't fucking stand it anymore, to where viewers start dropping dropping out and Triple H thinks, oh, this is good for business. So we keep doing this same bullshit. And WWE's ratings keep dropping and dropping and dropping and Triple H is going, oh, this is great for business. We'll do more of this fucking bullshit. And we keep going and going and going until finally they decide, okay, we're going to put it into it. We're done. We even put it in the hands of John Cena and John Cena's never going to bring the authority back. But by God, what? Not even two fucking months later, the authority gets to be back on TV to ruin 2014 like they fucking ruined 2013, and they're going to fucking ruin 2015 for the fucking WWE Universe. I am so fucking pissed off at seeing this goddamn ego-driven son of a bitch back on TV again, totally going to hog up all the limelight once again, business is fucking usual. Fans aren't going to buy the WWE Network for this shit. They're not going to be paying attention to Raw for yep. this shit. The ratings are going to be flushed down the fucking tubes. And Killer Kev is going to be fucking miserable for another goddamn year because of triple fucking H. Fuck you. Fuck you. Take a giant oh double-fisted dildo. Shove it up your goddamn ass, <laughs> motherfucking king of kings, lord of lords. I do not give a shit. And if you want to make Killer Kev watch Raw even less, go ahead and put fucking Triple H at the start of the show every fucking night. And I guarantee you it's going to be a wa- night that Killer Kev is not going to watch. I will go watch any fucking thing else. I've got plenty of motherfucking TV. But, you know, we're getting ready to come back off of the... The, the winter hiatus. We've got the blacklist on NBC, 10 p.m. That's where my ass is going to be watching. We're going to be having Vikings back. We're going to be having programming on HBO, Hulu, uh, Netflix. Um, I don't care. I will fucking pirate it from the goddamn internet. Fuck, I will stare at my navel for three fucking hours before I watch another goddamn minute of Triple H yammering on and acting like he is the hottest shit in this business when he is not. I am done. I am sick. I am over this fucking bullshit with WWE. Fucking over it. Fucking over it. Done. This whole goddamn thing with WWE is a big ass fuck it fail. And Killer Kev is moving on. This is like this is fucking awesome. And like you said, uh, every show that Jordan Garber's on, he has to uh, have some a little bit of controversy. But like, that's what I said is that Triple H uh, and make make a lot of said you got to be careful. The people from the WWE are listening, so I'm not really gonna say anything. But like you said, like you see too much of one person, and you're gonna get tired of it. And I think it's ridiculous too to see the authority come back. It, it's it's kind of like that. I wasn't upset about it as you are. This is this that rant you just made is gonna make angry marks history, but just seeing them come back, it's like, oh, really? We gotta see this shit again? It's a bunch of bullshit. You know what I mean? It's all one big fucking game, one big fucking game that people wanna watch, and some people fall for the same shit. I just don't let it bother me. 
I do my thing, I do my shows. If people don't like me, I don't give a shit. I just love to do what I love to do. I love to do these shows. I love to entertain you guys. And yes, I have gotten my name out there, so people need to realize that. I have gotten my name out there, so people stop trying to be jealous and stop hating me because I'm doing this because I love this. And going back to the authority and what you were talking about, of course, um, you got to see the same bullshit again next year. That's the thing about wrestling. Sometimes it's way too predictable. I'm just tired of it, really. I mean, I- I'm going to borrow a line from a movie that came out well before you were born, from the, from okay. the classic War Games. The only way to win is not to play at all. How about a nice game of check? And that's what Kilikev is go- of, of chess. And that's what Kilikev is going to do. He is going to go off and play a fucking game of chess. Or, or you know what? I'm actually going to, from now on, Monday nights is, is no longer going to be WWE Raw night for me. I'll still, of course, produce the Raw reaction. Angry Tenzai and Big Vic will watch the show every week and they will enjoy it. I ain't going to watch this shit. I am not going to watch this shit. Monday night is going to be Killa Kev video game night from now on. And Killa Kev only plays one video game called Open TTD. You can go download it for free at OpenTTD.org. You can even so- find some of the content that Killa Kev has originally created for this game. And you can listen to music that I have actually put together for this game. I have over almost oh. close to half a million people who have downloaded my music that I've created for the game. And... Probably close to a quarter million people who have downloaded my content to play in the game as well. And, you know, contact me privately if you want to know what content that is. I'll be more than happy to, to do so. You know, go to OpenTTD.org. Follow it on, on, on Facebook. Search for OpenTTD. You can find it on there as well. Go play this game. It's incredibly fun. It's a throwback game to the 90s. You know, it, it's, it's almost just as old as Triple H's wrestling career, but it's more fun and it's still entertaining, way more entertaining than Triple H's today. I ain't watching Raw for this bullshit anymore. Kill a Kev is go playing video games and that's how 2015 is going to be. And that's the bottom line because Kill a Kev says so. So is this it for Raw Reaction and Kill a Kev producing it or like what are you trying to say here? Oh, uh, well, like I just said, um, I'll still produce Raw Reaction. Angry Vic and Tenzai make the big bucks to watch Raw every week, and they'll comment on it, and I'm sure they'll enjoy it. But I ain't watching a damn shit. So from now on, Killer, if, if, if Vic or, or Tenzai throw it to Killer Kev, so Killer Kev, what do you think about this? I don't give a fucking shit. I was playing with trains. Killer Kev, what, what, Killer Kev, how, how, how did you like the show? I didn't give a shit. I was playing with my fucking train set. That's what Killa Kev was doing. Choo choo, motherfucking choo choo, because I ain't watching Triple H. Choo choo, motherfucker. That's right. Choo choo, motherfucker. Choo choo, motherfucker. That's awesome. Are we still going live here? Um, we we might have just been caught up, uh, cut off of, of the live feed on the on the podcast. But anybody that was listening at the beginning of the show, it, if if you tuned in right before it cut off, they're still listening. So we got a few minutes, but we are running. A couple of minutes over here, so um, we should go ahead and wrap. Let's wrap things up. So, Jordan, anything else that you would like to plug that you have not yet plugged for the evening? Well, guys, like I said, this has been a second time. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Jordan J Garber. Actually, I'm on Snapchat too at Jordan's Zone Seventeen. Send me a snap; it's pretty cool. I I post some funny stuff on there. Um, if you want to listen to most of the interviews I've done throughout my interviewing stuff and all that. Go on WrestlingRoad247.com. JGW, an episode will be up next week as well. Uh, that should be cool. Wrestling Road 247 returns in 2015 with a guy who's no stranger to Winnipeg Wrestling, Wayne Stanton. So Wrestling Road 247 is back for 2015. And JGW is uh, after the new year. There will be an episode up every single Saturday as well. Check out the SmackDown Rundown, which will be posted every weekend on AngryMarks.com. And last but not least, check out Thursday Night AMP. Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central, and if we're not recording, you can listen to the archives. And like I said, most importantly, follow me on Twitter at Jordan J. Garber. And uh, honestly, guys, thank you all for the support in 2014. I'm looking forward to 2015 and what the future brings me. It's going to be really fun. Awesome. Well, we are uh, to announce some of the the shows that we're doing this coming week. Tomorrow night, Undisputed Wrestling Show, 9 p.m. Eastern Live. We're going to talk to independent women's wrestler Lady Blossom, um, who a lot of people remember as being one of the original 
uh, valets for Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ooh, that should be interesting. And, 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 I'll definitely and, be tuning into that. And, and one of his original wives as well. And in the second hour, we're going to be speaking with uh, independent wrestler Jake Oman. Nice. Um, Wednesday night, uh, glove up or shut up. Uh, I honestly don't know if Stevie J has, uh, has a recording scheduled for that. I, I think he probably does. Um, but if not, it's because of the, the holiday. Um, I'm not sure what Peter H's schedule is for this week. Um, Thursday night AMP. Um, this is going to be tentative because it's, of course, New Year's Day. Stevie J is not going to be here. Um, what we are going to try to do, um, is myself and Rick Craig from the Undisputed Wrestling Show. If we can get this set up, we're, we're going to be taking over Thursday night AMP. Uh, we were supposed to have an interview that we were going to record with Nigel McGinnis last week. Unfortunately, we had some tec- technical difficulties. Couldn't make that happen. We're going to try to make that happen Thursday night. Am I co-hosting Thursday night AMP? Please say I am. I think we could probably find a way to fit you on there. But There we go. But, Not announced. Jordan Garber, as well as Killer, Ke- Killer Kev, and the other half of the, uh, and Rick Craig, we will be interviewing Nigel McGinnis. That is huge news for Thursday night AMP. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have Nigel back on for the second time. The, the first time we had Nigel on a couple of years ago, he was promoting his, uh, his DVD that, uh, he started via a Kickstarter campaign and that went very successfully. We're gonna talk about, to Nigel about his new project. He has gone back to Kickstarter. He is starting a new wrestling promotion slash video production called LA Fights. He's on Kickstarter. He is raising money for it. Um, if you know about it and you haven't donated, you should probably consider making a Kickstarter donation. If you don't know about it and you want to learn more about it, listen to Thursday Night AMP tentatively. If we can get everything arranged, hopefully we, we can. We, it looks like we are so far, but, you know, sometimes things happen. I'm not going to absolutely promise we're going to deliver because things are not locked down yet. But the 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 plan is Nigel McGinnis, Thursday night, AMP, 9 p.m. to talk about the Kickstarter campaign for L.A. Fights. So that that's pretty much what we're doing. Um, I'm not sure if Over the Top Radio has a show this weekend. It looks like they tentatively are, but they might not because of the, the holiday and stuff that we're coming on. And then we will probably have an episode of SmackDown Rundown this coming weekend, again, with Mr. Garber and, of course, Nikolai. If you haven't listened to SmackDown Rundown, go listen to yesterday's episode of SmackDown Rundown, where we had not only Nikolai and also had Jordan Garber, but returning to the airwaves, the original co-host for the SmackDown Rundown, King J came back to visit us and to talk. King J has returned to Angry Marks and has made an impact. Indeed, so... That's it for all of us here at the Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Thank you for putting up with Jordan's unceasingly ending promotions. Thank you for putting up with my ever so angry rants. We hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Angry Tenzai and Big Vic will be back next week. So tune in then as they kick off 2015 as we head into the... 199th episode of the Raw Reaction, which means the week after will be episode number 200, 200, big show coming up. I've now completely lost my voice. I'm crying here. I gotta get off the air. Good night. Good night.